Welcome back, new volunteers. During session two, we will focus on 4-H club basics. As we broach the topic of 4-H club basics, we will cover the purpose of a 4-H club, club charter requirements, all about club meetings and club finances, as well as fundraisers. But before we do that, we will touch on team engagement and look back and discuss what we learned during session one. Let's get started. As we look back at session one, one of the major points of discussion was positive youth development. As you probably recall, positive youth development is the process that incorporates social, emotional, cognitive, physical, and moral development of youth to meet the challenges of adolescence with the outcome of becoming competent, caring, contributing adults. Within positive youth development, we work to develop life skills, practice youth adult partnerships, appreciate diversity, develop the essential elements, understanding ages and stages, and developing leadership skills. All of these parts together will hopefully create proactive, competent, caring, and contributing citizens. When we think about life skills and essential elements, we think back to the four H's of the 4-H pledge. The four H's signify head, heart, hands, and health, which, which both life skills and essential elements are focused around. The life skills being thinking and managing, relating and caring, working, giving, being, and living, and the essential elements being independence, generosity, mastery, and belonging. We are going to give you a few minutes to take a look at the Mapping Youth Adult Partnerships worksheet. On this worksheet, you should follow the three steps to complete it. First of all, think about all of the groups, committees, teams, people, and organizations that make decisions for 4-H in your county. Include the groups that you are a part of, as well as those that you are not a part of. In the square below, make a list of those groups. Once you've completed this, begin to think about where youth are involved in the decision-making process of the various groups. Circle the groups that use Youth Adult Partnerships. Also, think about the level of the Youth Adult Partnership. Is it token, or do the youth have a full voice and vote? Once you've completed Section 2, you should now think about the groups that could have youth adult teams or that you could increase the level of their youth adult partnership. Put a star next to those groups to indicate where new opportunities exist. Take some time at the end of this presentation to recall what you have learned about the ages and stages of youth. Use the handouts to match the developmental stages of the youth. If you would like to, you can pause this presentation to complete the activities. So why do we start 4-H clubs? Well, 4-H clubs have a culture of their own, a family in itself. 4-H clubs provide ongoing educational experiences for youth on multiple topics. In addition, 4-H provides opportunities for members within and beyond the club. They are actively engaged in the community and providing service to others. 4-H is a family affair. We encourage family involvement in all aspects of our program and we help youth to develop and practice life skills. In order for 4-H clubs to be a chartered 4-H club, they must complete the following requirements. Five or more youth from at least two different families must be enrolled in the club. The club must have elected youth officers. The club must also appoint club volunteers. You must have at least two following application, screening, and training. Each club must also establish club bylaws. This includes a non-discriminatory club name, meeting locations, and regularly scheduled meetings with planned educational programs. They must have at least six meetings. Each club must have a written educational plan for each of their club meetings. They must also follow the affirmative action policy and meet all county requirements. We know that you are ready to get your club going, but here's what you need to have completed first. First of all, you will need to create a 4-H online profile. Within this profile, you will input your demographics and select the club which you plan to volunteer for. Once you've completed your profile, you will take the annual Youth Protection Training, YCS 800. You can find this inside the 4-H online system under Trainings. Once all of this is complete, we will 
be able to submit your profile for a background screening. This screening will include a volunteer interview conducted by the 4-H agent, reference checks, and the DCF background screening and the sexual offender or predator search documentation. Once you have been screened and approved, you can begin recruiting project leaders and activity leaders. You can begin developing club goals, a yearly plan, club bylaws, and you can complete the club charter application. New volunteers, you are required to complete the volunteer training series as well. And guess what? You're halfway through training number two. Now that your screening is done and you have done all of the preliminary planning for your club, what should your first meeting consist of? First of all, you should welcome all club members to the meeting. Start out strong by creating a sense of ease among those attending the meeting. You can begin by reviewing your club requirements. You can work with the club members to select a club name. You can adopt the club bylaws by discussing and voting on them. You can discuss club happenings and what you want to get out of the club. What are their goals for the year? Have youth nominate other youth who they feel would be great club officers. Hold an election at this meeting or the next. Make sure to review 4-H enrollment with all the youth and their families. Review what has happened and make a plan for the next meeting. Make sure that you provide information to connect youth with the resources that they will need. This may include 4-H curriculum books, the 4-H online website, and more. Club meetings should not just consist of a business meeting. All meetings should have three components, including the business portion, educational program, and recreation. This recreation portion of the meeting should entail 25% of the meeting time. The program portion of the meeting should entail 50% of the meeting time. And finally, you should allow for 25% of your meeting to be the recreation portion. Let's go over a little more in depth about what should be included in each portion of your club meeting. First, during the business meeting, you should have club officers. The president of the club should call the meeting to order and club members should recite the pledges. The secretary should call roll and read the minutes of the previous meeting. The treasurer should give the treasurer's report and any committees should give their committee reports. Once all reports have been read, the club should address any unfinished business from the previous meeting before moving on to any new business that needs to be discussed. Once the leader has the opportunity to provide any announcements, you will adjourn the business portion of the meeting. Remember that the business portion of the meeting will include any plans being made, fundraisers or community service being planned, events being held or attended, and more. The second portion of the meeting would be the educational program. During this portion of the meeting, demonstrations can be given by 4-H members. You can provide opportunities for youth to complete curriculum-based projects and community service projects. This would also be a great opportunity to invite a guest speaker and many other opportunities for youth. Finally, you will need to provide time for recreation. This recreation should be planned by the recreation chair or committee or by the club officers. It is important that this part of the meeting is fun for the youth and is something that is safe and appropriate for youth of all ages. During the recreation portion of the meeting, you can appoint older members into leadership roles as they often are seen as mentors to younger youth. Finally, you may choose to include refreshments as part of the meeting. This would be a great opportunity to get families involved to provide part of the refreshments for each meeting. When electing club officers, you will need to elect a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. If you have enough youth who want to be involved, you can also elect a reporter, historian, parliamentarian, recreational chair, sergeant at arms, and community service chair. All club officers will need to attend the club officer training. They should keep updated records required for their specific club and should complete and submit club officer record books annually. Club meetings should include the use of parliamentary procedure. Why should youth use parliamentary procedure? Well, parliamentary procedure helps create a sense of ethics and customs within a meeting room. It helps to keep order during the meeting and keeps the group focused on the task at hand. It is a great idea to take a look at Robert's Rules of Order, which is what parliamentary procedure is based off of. 
Within parliamentary procedure, youth members can make a motion or anything that needs to be brought before a club for a decision. In order to make decisions within a club meeting, a quorum is needed. A quorum would include one half plus one of a bona fide member of the 4-H club. For instance, if a 4-H club has 50 members, a quorum would be 25 plus one or 26 members in order for the vote to be legitimate. Take a few minutes and watch this video that shows just how parliamentary procedure is used in a 4-H club meeting. Parliamentary procedure was created to keep organizations running in a smooth and efficient manner. Parliamentary procedure is defined as a code of ethics to be followed by individuals in a group to conduct business. Parliamentary procedure is unique to the democratic process. To learn parliamentary procedure is to learn democracy, allowing majority rule while giving the minority their say. We hope that this video will enable you to be involved in the decisions of your 4-H club and other organizations you may be a member of. The guide most commonly associated with parliamentary procedure is Robert's Rules of Order. Be sure you purchase the latest edition. Before an organized meeting can occur, there should be an agenda. An agenda is the order of business for a specific meeting. The agenda should include the following. Call to order. Roll call. Minutes, Treasurer's Report, Committee Reports, including Standing Committees and Special Committees, Unfinished Business, New Business, and Adjournment. Call to order is done by the President to bring the meeting to order, and for many organizations, such as 4-H, will include opening ceremonies such as pledges. Roll call is done by the secretary. Roll calls are used to determine quorums and majorities by those attending the meetings. Minutes are the recorded transactions from the previous meeting and in youth organizations are generally read by the secretary. Minutes may also be distributed electronically prior to the meeting or in hard copy at the meeting to save the time of reading them aloud. Treasurer's reports are given by the treasurer. These reports are the financial transactions of the club since the previous meeting. This information requires no vote and is for information only. Committee reports are given by the committee chairs. There are two types of committees, standing and special. Standing committees are permanent in nature. Examples include a budget committee or membership committee. Special committees are those formed to address special circumstances which meet a short-term objective. Business can be brought forth from a committee and acted upon at the time of the committee report. Only committees designated with the power to act may take action without bringing the business forward to the overall group for approval. Unfinished business is business which was not completed at the last regular meeting. New business is exactly that. New business put before the group for their attention and vote. Usually, new business should be on the agenda. However, any member may bring up any new business if recognized by the chair. To adjourn is to formally end the meeting. The gavel is used by the president or chair to provide order to the meeting. In this video, you will see the president use one tap of the gavel to signify the end of an item of business. This may not be done in every club. The only required gavel taps are those for opening and closing the meeting. Two taps brings the meeting to order, and one tap adjourns the meeting. Additional gavel etiquette includes three taps to signal members to stand. The chair may also repeatedly tap the gavel to regain order if a meeting becomes unruly. The floor is now open for new business. What is the first item of business? The purpose of a main motion is to introduce business to the group. A main motion is debatable, amendable, and requires a majority vote. Debatable means the motion can be discussed pro and con. Amendable means the motion can be changed. Majority means more than half of the votes cast. Mr. President. Yes, Sullivan. I move that we participate in the Adopt-A-Mile program as part of our community service project. A second is required for a main motion to show that another person wishes the motion to be considered. I second that motion. It has been properly moved and seconded that we participate in the adopt program as part of our community service project. Is there any discussion?
The president will ask for debate or discussion. Once a motion has been properly moved and seconded, an individual wishing to discuss a motion must gain recognition from the chair. Mr. President? Yes, Katie. I think we should participate in this program because it shows a good sense of community service. Also because it shows a good sense of pride in our community. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Michaela. I'm in favor of this motion because we could easily turn it into a fundraiser by separating the aluminum cans, sending them to a recycling center, and taking the money off of that. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Yes, slowly. I'm strongly against this motion. It's in the busiest intersection in town, and with all the semis going back and forth, it's unsafe for the children to be by the road. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we should have to proceed to vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. When calling for the opposition, the president may ask for a negative response, such as no or nay. In the event of a non-voice vote, such as raising hands, the president may ask for the same sign. Nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. We will participate in the adopt a program as part of our community service project. Now, let's add another step. We're going to amend a main motion. An amendment is used to modify the main motion. First, you must have a main motion so that there is something to amend. A second is required for an amendment to show that another member wishes the motion to be considered. Amendments are also debatable, amendable, and require a majority vote. What is the first item of business? Mr. President. Yes, Sullivan. I move that we participate in the Adopt-A-Mile program as part of our community service project. I second that motion. It has been properly moved and seconded that we participate in the Adopt-A-Mile program as part of our community service project. Is there any discussion? During discussion or debate of the main motion, an amendment may be proposed. Mr. President. Yes, Miguel. I move to amend the main motion by adding the words between mile markers 10 and 11. I second that amendment. It has been properly moved and seconded that we amend the main motion by inserting the words between mile markers 10 and 11. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Katie. I'm opposed to the amendment because I feel that they will probably assign us which mile we need to do and we will not have a say in the matter. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Louis. We have to take mile marker 10 and 11 because all the others have already been taken. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we should now proceed to vote on the amendment to the main motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. We, the motion currently on the floor is to participate in the adopt a mile program between mile markers 10 and 11 as part of our community service project. Is there any discussion? Once an amendment passes, it becomes part of the main motion. The main motion has been modified. Seeing none, we should now proceed to vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Nay. Motion carries. We will participate in the adopt amount program between mile markers 10 and 11 as part of our community service project. You have learned about a main motion and amending a main motion. Let's review for a minute. A main motion is debatable, amendable, and requires a majority vote. Debatable means the motion can be discussed pro and con. Amendable means the motion can be changed. Majority means more than half of the votes cast. An amendment is used to modify the main motion and also requires a second. The amendment is debatable, amendable, and requires a majority vote. Once an amendment passes, it becomes part of the main motion. In some cases, it may be necessary to delay action on an item of business until more information can be gathered. There are two basic ways to do this. The first is to lay on the table to postpone taking any action until a later time. This motion requires a second and a majority vote. The motion to lay on the table is not amendable or debatable. Is there any more new business? Mr. President. Yes, Sullivan. I move that we participate in the Adopt-A-Mile program as part of our community service project. I second that motion. It has been properly moved and seconded that we participate in the Adopt-A-Mile program as part of our community service project. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Sullivan. Since Ms. Dean is very involved in this project, I move to table the motion that we participate in the adopt a -Mile program as our community service project until she is present and can provide additional information. A second is required to table a motion. I second that. It has been properly moved and seconded that we table the motion to participate in the adopt a -Mile program as part of our community service project. 
All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. This motion has been tabled. Is there any further new business? Before a motion can be taken from the table, another item of business must be transacted. Mr. President. Yes, Katie. I move that we change our meeting location to the bank hospitality room next month. Do you recognize this as a main motion? It is. I second that. It has been properly moved and seconded that we change our meeting place next month to the bank hospitality room. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Sullivan. We should move our meeting place because this room won't be available next month. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we should proceed to vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. We will hold our next meeting in the bank hospitality room. Is there any more new business? Mr. President. Yes, Michaela. Since Ms. Dean just walked in the door, I move to take from the table the motion to participate in the Adopt-A-Mile program as part of our community service. Thank you. Is there a second? I second that. It has been properly moved and seconded that we take from the table the motion to participate in the adopt mile program as part of our community service project. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. The motion currently on the floor is to participate in the adopt mile program as part of our community service project. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Ms. Dean. I spoke to the highway department regarding our safety concerns, so we decided to put up safety barriers as well as a trash truck going along picking up all of the trash bags along the interstate, so there will be no safety hazards. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we will proceed to the vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. We will participate in the adopt a program as part of our community service project. Is there any more new business? The second option for delaying action is to refer. Refer to a committee is to refer the issue to a committee to further investigate the item of business or take action. This motion requires a second, is debatable, amendable, and requires a majority vote. It is often helpful to suggest the number of members or a deadline for committees to report back. A committee may also be given the power to act, meaning they can move forward without coming back to the club. A committee that has not been given the power to act must present their suggestions in the form of a motion and have the action voted on by the club before moving forward. Is there any more new business? Mr. President. Yes, Sullivan. I move that we participate in the Adopt-A-Mile program as part of our community service project. I second that motion. It has been properly moved and seconded that we participate in the Adopt-A-Mile program as part of our community service project. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Yes, Lily. I believe there are safety precautions that need to be investigated before taking on this project. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Mr. President? Yes, Katie. I move that we refer this motion to a committee so more information can be gathered and brought back to the club. I second that. It has been properly moved and seconded that we refer the motion that we participate in the adopt mile program as part of our community service project to a committee. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we should now proceed to vote. All those in favor of referring to a committee, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. The motion carries. This motion has been referred to a committee consisting of Sullivan, Lily, and Miss Dean. Is there any more new business? Let's review delaying action. The two most common ways to delay action on an item of business so that more information can be gathered are lay on the table and refer to a committee. To table a motion is to postpone taking any action on the motion until a later time. This motion requires a second, is not debatable, is not amendable, and requires a majority vote. Once tabled, a motion cannot be taken from the table until another item of business has been transacted. Refer to a committee is to refer the issue to a committee to gain further information or take action. The motion to refer requires a second, is debatable, is amendable, and requires a majority vote. Remember that the role of the committee is to gather information and report back to the club. In some cases, a committee may be given the power to act, in which case they can move forward without coming back to the club for vote. However, they are still accountable to the overall club and must report on their activities. To adjourn is to formally end the meeting. The motion to adjourn requires a second, is not debatable, and is not amendable. Adjourning a meeting requires a majority vote. Is there any more new business? Mr. President. Yes, Sullivan. I move to adjourn this meeting. 
I second that. It has been properly moved and seconded that we adjourn this meeting. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. We are adjourned. The motions presented in this video are the most common motions in parliamentary procedure. They provide a foundation on which parliamentary procedure skills may be built. For further information, obtain the latest edition of Robert's Rules of Order or contact your local county extension office as they may have resources. meeting agendas should be a collaboration between the 4-H leader and the 4-H club officers. In order to help your club officers create an agenda, you must also know the correct order of the meetings. Pause this video and take a few minutes to arrange the business meeting agenda items in the proper order. Go ahead and pause the video to complete this task. Let's see how you did. Here is the proper order of the 4-H meeting agenda. Starting from the top, we would call the meeting to order, followed by the pledges. Next, the secretary would complete the roll call. The secretary would then read the meeting minutes from the previous meeting. Next comes the treasurer's report, and then all other officer reports, followed by the committee reports. Once committee reports have been completed, the leader has the opportunity to do the leader's report. This is an optional report. Once the leader has reported, all unfinished business should be discussed. Then comes the new business, followed by any announcements that need to take place, and then the meeting adjourns. Once you have an active 4-H club, you may have fundraisers or donations that turn into club monies. But remember, 4-H money equals public money. All 4-H club money and committee funds are to support the educational and life skills development of club members. All 4-H financial policies are governed by the IRS, State of Florida, University of Florida, and the Office of the Dean for Extension. Each club is allowed to have $75 in petty cash that the club leader is in charge of. All other money should be turned into the 4-H office as the 4-H office is considered your bank. In order to request club funds from the 4-H office, your club members should vote on the purpose of the money being requested and the amount of money needed. Your club should complete the 4-H financial transaction form and submit the form along with meeting minutes and an invoice or receipts. Remember, approval may take one to two weeks. So, in order to have money, you will need to do fundraisers. Before having a fundraiser, your club will need to begin planning. Ask the following questions. What activity will the club complete to raise the money? Who plans to assist with this fundraiser? Why are we having this fundraiser? What purpose does it serve? When will this fundraiser take place? How will the fundraiser and or the monies received enhance the 4-H experience? Once you have an answer to all of these questions, the club should complete a fundraiser application form. This needs to be completed at least 15 days prior to the fundraiser. This form should be submitted to the 4-H office for approval. Remember the application must be completely filled out with the club treasurer's signature and the meeting minutes attached. Also remember that you should not start putting information out about the fundraiser or promoting the fundraiser prior to the forms being submitted and approved. In order for the fundraiser to be approved, all aspects must be complete, including the completed applications, signatures, educational purpose, and the attached meeting minutes. We must follow sales tax guidelines, so please make sure that you are aware of whether or not the items that you are selling during a fundraiser are taxable or non-taxable. When completing a fundraiser, make sure that you are still following the youth adult ratio standards which have been discussed in the YCS 800 training as this is a 4-H event. Make sure that anyone handling cash is aware of how to make change and proper money handling procedures. Finally, please provide receipts for all of the money received. After the fundraiser, complete the 4-H financial tra transaction form or deposit form and deposit the money to the 4-H office. The treasurer should complete the treasurer's report as soon as possible. Let this serve as a summary of what we've discussed during this class. 
First, we discuss charter requirements. Remember that you must have a minimum of five members from at least two different families. You must also abide by the county and state requirements. Number two, we discussed a club meeting. Remember that your club meeting should, should consist of three parts, business, education, and recreation. The club officers should always lead the business meetings and they should abide by the parliamentary procedures. All clubs should have club bylaws and meet only after the leaders have been approved. And third, we discuss club finances. Don't forget that 4-H money is public money. You can have petty cash of up to $75, which should be monitored by the club leader. No monetary donations should be made to individual 4-H members, only to a club itself. Fundraisers are done for educational pur purposes. Also, there should be no money hoarding. You should have a reason for the money that you have uh, brought into your club through donations or fundraisers. Again, thank you so much for attending the second course in the volunteer leader training. We hope that you learned a lot, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact the 4-H office.